So, recent Nestle runaways uh, locally uh, have been 2014 Cutty Sark Station, 2016 at um, Reading Station, then in 2017 the Mon Shop Shopping Mall, and then uh, more recently in October 2018 the Piazza della Repubblica in Rome. Uh, and I've got some videos as well from these. But in reality, runaways have been occurring ever since escalators were invented. Anyone know when the first escalator patent went in? 1859, believe it or not. A guy called Nathan Ames. A bit, a bit ahead of his time because a motor wasn't invented until 1871. Um, one of the worst cases occurred in 1994 and it became known as the Camden Yards incident uh, and saw an injury toll of 43 people. The thing with an escalator, when it runs away, it's going to put everyone in a pile at the bottom. And if you happen to be on the bottom, it's going to hurt. Um, and the escalator will speed up. It's very interesting. And then it will stop. Because it's a balanced machine, uh, you've got the same amount of steps above as you have below. Uh, with people on it, it will roll. And the more people on it, the faster it will roll. But it will keep rolling until it, it loses its momentum. And then it will just look innocent. Be, yeah, well, yeah, I wasn't involved in that. Um, so this is the, the famous one in, um, in Camden Yards in 94, and these incidents do tend to occur in high population areas where you've got um, a load of people, so Camden Yards is a sports ground in America, um, loads and loads of people on the escalator, so you, you, you get a crush loading on the escalator. Um, and you'll, you'll see one, which I'll explain during the video in a minute, how it unfurled, and then you, the, the penny will drop as to what's gone on. So what happened at Camden Yard? So the top shaft went, and as a result of the top shaft going, uh, there was no uh, relationship, a bit like a gearbox failure on the lift. You know, and the brake's always been between the motor and the gearbox on a, on a traditional lift. So that gearbox goes, you're, you've had it, you're, and there's nothing there to hold it stationary. You've got to rely on the overspeed governor bringing it in. And if you've got an idle line on a lift, uh, and the gearbox goes, nothing's going to, the only thing that's going to, it's going to find the buffers, isn't it? Yeah, it's not going to pull in the safety gear. So top shaft went. Uh, unfortunately, that is the only drawing I've got of it. But this top shaft went here. And so as a result of this top shaft going, these were spinning, and so there was absolutely no relationship with the step band to the motor and gearbox. So it's just a complete runaway. Then Reading Station escalator. Reading Station's been pretty famous for escalator accidents. Uh, does anyone live over Reading Way or go through Reading? Uh, it's been great. If I had a pound for every time I've been on the radio for the BBC talking about escalator accidents at Reading, I'd be, be quite well off. Um, up to 40 people were climbing the stationary escalator, there's the start of the clue, uh, when it began to move backwards. Some of, some of the roughly 15 people who fell said they sustained cuts and bruises. And these accidents manifest themselves in, a, in a, a strange way as well, because apart from that pile of people at the bottom that I described earlier, if people are on the, the step band itself and they could see they're, they're facing the pile of bodies at the bottom, they'll start jumping over the sides. So you get different kinds of accidents in, in that respect. So what happened there? Brake. The, um, the escalator was stationary. It had a brake defect. Um, it was switched off. Um, it was barriered off, but people started moving the barriers. And then a train load of people came in, which is typical, obviously, with the, with the railway station. You just get a load of people in one hit. And then the station clears that, those people and then another train comes in. So you, you're constantly getting pulses of people. So people were walking up the escalator and then got to a point where there's enough of them on the escalator for it to roll backwards because the brake just couldn't hold them. Hong Kong, this is the Hong Kong incident. So March 2017, there was 120 people on the escalator. That gives you a clue of the size of the thing. The main drive chain broke and it reversed. Uh, and they were, they were lucky to get away with just 18 injuries. But um, the engineer, this was very interesting, it's in the public domain, so I'm not telling, telling tales. The engineer initially uh, was charged with um, interfering with evidence. 
because um, when they went to investigate the accident, they caught they asked him to come back, uh, and he started adjusting the brake, uh, and so he got arrested um, for that. But then, when it came to court, he admitted charges of failing to ensure the escalator was thoroughly examined. Uh, and in Hong Kong, the fitter also does the thorough examination, which we, we can debate till the cows come home. I know. Um, but um, when it came to, when it came to it, he went to trial. He went actually. I didn't check that. No, I didn't check that. I saw that during maintenance. Didn't check that. So, um, and there you can see. Unfortunately, I've not got a video of it. But you can see the pile of bodies at the bottom. Yeah, this is just from a view from above. You can see what a monster that escalator is. And the other thing to consider there is I was saying that people would would be throwing themselves over over the side. Look where they've got what a, what a choice to make. Do you do you stay on it and then end up in that pile at the bottom, or do you go over the side where you've got to go at least a floor? Um, what a choice to make. So this is the Kakisaki in, um, in London on the, the um, DLR system. This is one that I see I found quite alarming. It's the, the gearbox essentially that's gone, but it's the splines. So here's an actual picture from site. So what you've actually got is multiple drives across, and these splines in here are set on the axles. And what happened over the years, those splines have worn. So all of a sudden one day it gave out. And <coughs> it's, it's like the gearbox going again. The brake could not function. Um, and did not function. See what, how slowly that step band's moving. The clue's there, it's pulling through the brake. Yeah. And then it's away. You see, and it's not stopped until everyone's off the bottom and there's just a few people on it and the brake can hold that. But if you, if you saw what was going on there, when we initially saw it, the s -like step band was just creeping. And it turned out what happened is someone had pushed the emergency stop button on that escalator. And the brake had come on, but it couldn't hold its load. And so then it, it gradually was pulling through the brake. And then the more people getting on it, uh, the faster it went. Uh, there is a question as to why the auxiliary brake didn't come in, but we'll, we'll get to that debate in a minute. So this is a view, this is a different machine, but at the bottom. You can suddenly see people are aware that there's something going on. Look at that delivery of people. There was no one in that hall, was there? Then all of a sudden, there's a throughput of people. And to give you the full set, this is more interesting. <laughs> You can just see how that manifests itself. So, when, when you're out there on, on escalators, the brake is absolutely paramount during your inspections, guys. Uh, and I know a lot of brakes are very, very difficult to see on an escalator these days. Um, and, th and questions do come up about the engineer surveyor and the role of the engineer surveyor. Um, and the best way to discharge your duty is to be able to say, I did ask. It's an interesting world as well because you find escalators in, obviously in transport environments and in retail environments, and the two things that they have in common is that they don't want to give you more than 30 seconds to look at the machine. Um, and it takes a lot longer than that, everyone knows that. Um, I've got pictures of, of steps with holes in them and uh, you know, bits missing out of them and still running. Um, you need time to look at uh, every step and every, every chain link on, on the escalator. Yeah. Yeah. I use this, um, uh, this Venn diagram quite a lot. It was developed by a guy called Lutvi El Sharif, some of you may know. 
but um, he wrote a paper about escalator accidents and this absolutely fits beautifully. So on the right hand side, accidents caused by, caused by bad design and passenger behaviour. Uh, and the majority of escalator accidents do fall into that. Design, design is also about the location of the escalator as well, not just the design of the escalator physically, but where you put the escalator can be important. And there's a little no standard, 5656 part two, uh, where um, it calls for a risk assessment based on where the escalator, uh, the environment of the escalator. And then there's accidents down here caused solely by the lack of maintenance uh, and no regular testing of safety devices, so maintenance, inspection and operation. And we're just talking about that, that's becoming a, a dark area as well. So going back to the brake failure, uh, this was the brake in Bolton, the Bolton incident. Um, single not polarised brake coil. And what had happened there was the, the, the brake coil had actually gone uh, and the drive was driving through the brake. So eventually the brake was ineffective. And that's going to happen with escalators. How do you stop an escalator at night? You push the emergency stop. What does the emergency stop do? Brings on the breakthrough friction. That is like lock tipping once a day on a lift, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to affect your brake. So, in 115 part 1 2017, which I'm sure you, you realise is the manufacturing standard, um, it mirrors the previous 2008 and 1995 standards, which says with respect to requirement for an auxiliary brake, escalators and inclined moving walkway shall be equipped with an auxiliary brake if the connection between the operational brake and the driving sprockets of the steps and pallets or the drum of the belts is not accomplished by shafts, gear wheels, multiplex chains or more than one single chain. Um, I think most escalators fall into that category to be fair, but most escalators don't have auxiliary brakes especially the ones below six metres. Um, because above six metres it becomes a requirement, below six it isn't. Um, but you could, you could still do a lot of damage ru running away on a six metre machine. Or the operational brake is not an electrical mechanical brake according to that clause which says the normal lifting of the electromechanical brake shall be by a continuous flow of electric current. The brake in operation shall be effective immediately after the electric brake circuit is opened. The brake force shall be generated by guided compression springs. Electrically generated self-excitation of the brake releasing device shall be impossible. So, essentially that knocks it out as well because a single coil brake complies with that clause. So it's only the six metre rule that really becomes a discussion. Uh, and most retailers won't pay for an auxiliary brake, which is essentially a safety gear. So the 2000 standard also calls for detection of unintentional reversal of the direction of travel and states a device shall be provided for escalators and inclined moving walks, that's more than six degrees, to detect the unintentional reversal of direction of travel. Um, that's fine, but to comply with that, all you've got to do is drop the brake. But if you've got a head shaft problem or a, dr a drive chain failure, you can still run away. Um, the problem with this is that you could use, use the operational auxiliary brake if fitted to prevent the reversal, and these components are known to have failed, as we've seen from the videos. It also calls for the detection of excessive speed before the the speed exceeds a value of 1.2 times the nominal speed. Now, unlike a lift where um, you're simply going up and down and, and the, the, the speed is known, the angular speed changes obviously because of the angle of an escalator. When they only come in two sizes, as you know, 30 and 35 degrees. Um, and it's only in Europe that you can use a 35 degree machine. Interestingly, Australia and America won't allow it. But um, that 1.2 times the normal speed when you're flying downwards at an angle has anyone got any inclined lifts they look at? Mm, have you? Yeah? Yeah? If you watch an inclined lift arriving at a station yeah, it actually flies into station or you think it does but it's actually only doing the speed of a, an ordinary lift normally uh, but because of the angle you're thinking whoa that's going some speed 
Um, and so at 1.2 times the nominal speed, there's three speeds for escalators, 0 0.5, 0 0.65 and 0 0.75. Um, you can, um, if you're over six meters, you can only go uh, 0 0.5, if I remember correctly. So and the other issue as well is an angle, because um, if you're at 35 degrees, and you'll be a 0.5, that's the other criteria, 0.5 for a 35 degree machine. If you're going 1.2 times the speed and the auxiliary brake comes on, everyone's just going to fly forward. It's just like being in an incline lift and the safety gear comes in. So everyone actually gets thrown towards the doors. You don't get pushed into the floor like you would with the safety gear on the lift. So you don't have your knees as suspension, you just end up hitting the front wall of the car, or in this case, just flying down the step van. So it can be argued that the standards provide sufficient protection, however it's my contention that the auxiliary brake should be provided on all escalators and inclined moving walls. <coughs> in situations where the failure of the operational brake, gearbox and or drive chain can occur. In reality this means that all escalators and inclined moving walks would require an auxiliary brake. Um, and I'm pleased to say that after the symposium last year where um, I presented this, at least two of the major consultancies have changed their specification to say we want an auxiliary brake. So in conclusion, runaway escalators are still occurring despite the M115 standard recognising that unintended reversal or an overspeed condition is a foreseeable event. It's accepted that rather like a lift if where the overspeed governor or safety gear fails to work, there are scenario scenarios where an auxiliary brake does not provide full protection. It is, however, concluded that all escalators and moving walks should be provided with an auxiliary brake to support the operational brake. Essentially, I'm asking for a safety gear. That's what I'm asking for.